All right, well, last time we had an exam, and uh, I think we don't have any homework due today, but we do have a homework assignment due on Thursday. Um, oh, since there's no questions on, on, on the homework assignment, let's just <laughs> continue on. Unless there's questions about any of this material in general, but usually after you take an exam, you don't think about it for a while, right? So let's recap what we've done so far in um, this chapter 11. We're talking about sequential circuits and remember what we did is we saw how you can have a little feedback loop and construct an SR latch to have state. Remember that? Mm -hmm. And then we said, okay, what are the, for an SR latch, what are the, what are the three defined uh, operations with the SR latch. If S and R are 0, 0 and a clock pulse comes along, what happens to the state? Nothing. Nothing. It stays the same. And if SR is 1, 0 and a clock pulse comes along, what happens to the state? Um, Q becomes 1. Yes, because S means set. So if SR is 1, 0, that sets it to Q to 1. And if SR is 0, 1, it, and a clock pulse comes along, what does it do? It sets Q to zero. It resets Q to zero. And if SR is one one, we don't, know. we don't know. It's unpredictable. So that's an undefined state. And then what we did is we said, okay, let's um, let's do this. Let's do what is shown in Figure eleven point sixteen, and um, define that last state. So now, instead of, instead of having SR, we have what? JK. JK. So here it's SR. SR. So S corresponds to J and R corresponds to K. Right? So if, J, so if JK is 0, 0 and a clock pulse comes along, what happens? So if JK is 0, 0 and a clock pulse comes along, what happens? Nothing. If JK is 1, 0, what happens? It sets the Q to 1. If JK is 0, 1, what does it do? It resets Q to 0. But now if JK is 1, 1, now that becomes defined. And what is it defined as? Toggle. toggle. So if it comes, and what does toggle mean? That means if Q is 0 at time T, then what? At time T plus 1, it's? It's 1. But if it's 1 at time t, then at time t plus 1, it is yeah. 0. So that's what toggle means, right? So we, so the j, and then we said, at the end of class last time, we said there is a way to construct a JK flip-flop out of an SR flip-flop. Right? And do you, remember the, do you remember the design sequence that we used? There was, there was a systematic, there is a systematic procedure for doing that. We don't just have to like guess and do trial and error. There is a procedure for doing that. And do you remember what that procedure is? Design table? Yeah, we use this, we use the, the concept, actually there were several different tables. Remember we have, you're right. So, so what is, let's review those. So, um, so here is the JK flip-flop design problem. We said we must design a three input, two output combinational circuit. And um, here is a picture, uh, figure 11.9. So we have the S and the R, we have the SR flip-flop here, and then we're gonna feed back the Q into the combinational circuit. And then our input is going to be the J and the K. So our three inputs were what? Do you remember the three, in, the three Three, Q, J, and K. yes, the three inputs, three inputs into the combinational circuit are J, J at time T, K at time T, and Q at time T. And where do we, and the J and the K come from outside, but the Q comes from what? 
comes to the feedback, yeah, the feedback from the uh, SR flip-flop. Remember that, how we did that? Okay. And then what we wanted to do, like if you can imagine there's a dotted box around this whole thing, you know, with the clock coming in from the bottom and the JK coming out from here and the Q and the Q bar coming out, coming out to the right. And that whole thing has to behave like, like this um, characteristic table in figure 11.16. Okay, so what does the characteristic table tell you? It tells you what, is, what are the inputs at time t, and what is the state at time t, and then when a clock pulse comes along, what does it tell you? Yes, it tells you the results at time t plus 1, after the clock pulse. Are you with me? And by the way, what's to guarantee that a few, that it doesn't kind of like loop around and do a fewer, you know, an unstable master transition. Yeah, yeah, what is that? Threshold. Master slave. It's the master slave design principle is what guarantees it to not be the feedback, the feedback yeah, from making more than one transition. Yeah. Which would have been a sufficient answer for one place. <clears throat> yes, yeah, you, you might recall that I asked you that on the previous test you just took. That's the purpose of the, of the we master really, slave. Are we going to ever go over the edge? One. No, we're not going to do. I'm. I. I. Don't, we don't have time to ex describe. You. You could probably look it up on Wikipedia. You could look up edge. Edge triggered flip flop design principle or something. You might be able to find it. But it's. It's kind of hard to understand. You. It's. Um. You can make it with just. But you know the nice thing about it, is that the, it doesn't involve the threshold. You can. You can design. You can design uh, an edge triggered flip flop, without. Any mess, messing with any thresholds? It's yeah. really quite. It's quite ingenious. That's yeah, cool. it is cool. You you might try to. It's it's interesting, but it's kind of complicated to understand. But it's you you might you might look into that if you're interested. Let's try to figure that out. But we don't have time. It's beyond the scope of the course. But um, so so this is the characteristic table. But now in order to do design, the characteristic table is is good for analysis, right? Because it says, it, it analyzes what the circuit's going to do with the input being something and the state being something and what happens when a clock pulse comes along. It analyzes what's going to happen next. But then for design, what kind of table do we need? A uh, characteristic table? No. A characteristic yeah. table is, is good for analysis. Hmm? Table? The excitation table. Are you with me? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So here... Uh, in figure 11.15, this is the excitation table. Now look fundamentally, what does this excitation table tell you? It says, if you want a given transition, what must the input be to produce that transition? Are you with me on that? So you see, that's for design because it's saying, oh, I want it to transition like this. Well, if I want it to transition like this, what must the input be to cause that transition? And here on figure 11.15 is the excitation table for the SR flip-flop. Remember how we constructed that? For example, if you want the, if the current state is zero, if Q is equal zero, and you want Q to be zero at time T plus one, what must the S and R be in order for it to have that happen? Well, SR could either be what? Zero, zero, or it could also be what? Zero, one. Zero, one. If it's zero, zero, the state does not change, it stays zero. But if it's zero, one, it resets. But that will still keep it zero, zero. And remember how that worked? And then what we did is we said, okay, we will make this, we will do this design table, which is figure 11.17. We have Q at time T, and then J at time T, and K at time T. And we want to know, and we want, we. Q at time t plus 1 is what we want to have happen, right? That's what we want to have happen. And then we just list, and then we just go through from our excitation table, we, we give what S and R need to be in order to produce that. And then in figure 11.18, we just whipped that up on a Carnot map. And furthermore, there is a circuit for J, and then there's another circuit, sorry, there is a Carnot map for the input to S, and then there's a Carnot map for the input into R. Are you with me? And then when we did this and we minimized it 
and we saw that what is can you read off Q from figure 11.18 a there what was Q, what was sorry what was uh, s Q prime and J. And J. yeah Q prime and J and so if we look over here at figure 11.19 here's our our Q prime feeds in to here this AND gate with J and that's what our S is and then if we come back here to our Carnot map for R and we can read this off that's what Q Q and K right because yeah and then K so there's so Q Q feeds back here and that it's ANDed with the K and so that's what our input to R is. Does everybody see how that worked? Remember how that worked? So those two AND gates correspond to the combinational circuit black box in the previous image. That is absolutely correct and that's a good observation. These two AND gates are the interior of that combinational net network block in figure 11.9, the combinational circuit. They are the combinational circuit. Is everybody clear on how that worked, on how we did that, and how that worked? Now, do you remember there's four common flip-flops in sequential design? We've already done the SR, and we just did the JK. Now, do you remember what the other two are? D and T. Yeah. So, so let, let's take a look at let's take a look at how the how the D flip flop. What the, what is the characteristic of a D flip flop? The D can either stand for delay or data. I think if you look at it on a timing diagram, you'll see why it's called delay. Um, it's easier to see just look, looking at the circuit what that D stands for data. And here's what's interesting about the D flip flop. There's only one input. <coughs> All right, and this D is kind of the way is the, is the way to envision one bit of storage, because if you have a zero coming in and you clock it, what do you want? What do you suppose the, you know, to store one bit of data? If you have a zero coming in and you clock it, what should the state be? If you have a zero coming in and you clock it, what do you want to do with that zero? You want to you want to store it. Oh, okay. So what so what should the zero? Yeah, then that should make the state zero. And if you have a one coming in and you clock it, what should the state be? One. one. You see what I mean? Yeah. It's like whatever input you want it, you want the state to be whatever the input is. And further that means it's what? It's it's regardless of what? State. Regardless of what the current state is. You want the next state to be exactly what the data line says. Do you see what, is everybody with me on that? Yeah. Is that just like a clock pulse connected to an, uh, an AND gate on the line of the D? Well, we are going to implement the D flip-flop yeah, well, with an S. It just, if it just goes directly to Q, is it just, is the whole circuit just uh, an AND gate that's in an AND gate? No, 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 because just an AND gate does not have state. Are you with me? It ne we need to have state. Oh, right. You see? Yes, to hold it. Yeah, so the question is, couldn't it just be an AND gate? It can't just be an AND gate. It has to be a latch. It has to have state in order to hold it, yes. From one clock pulse to the next. Yeah, oh, that was a good question. And you see the answer why that's not the case. Are we going to use a master slave in order to... All of these, good question. All of these we assume that we are constructing them, we are constructing them out of SR flip-flops that are designed with master-slave. Because all of them have this feedback problem right. if, when we're going to use them externally. Is everybody clear on that? Okay. So here's the characteristics. The delay or data flip-flop. Only one input D and regardless of the current state, Q at time T, the state after the clock pulse, Q at time T plus one, will be the same as D at time T. Okay, so here. Let's do, um, let's do our characteristic, let's do our characteristic table. D at time t, Q at time t, Q at time t plus one. Okay, so zero, 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 one, one, zero, one, one. 
Okay, so can you tell me what? Zero, zero, one, one. Yeah, this should be zero, this should be zero, this should be one, this should be one. Does everybody see that, how that works? Okay. Now look, you guys. So here in figure 11.20 is that, is that table. And you see the block diagram, what the block diagram looks like? There's the clock pulse coming in, but now there's only one what? Input D. Are you with me? Does everybody see that? Okay, for the block diagram. And now, what are we going to do? We're going to make this up out of an SR, you know, we're going we're to use an SR flip-flop to, to implement this. And we'll, we'll use our same design procedure. But before we do that, check this out, you guys. Here is, in part, in part C, there is a timing diagram. And I think it's, it's illustrative. Look, look at part C, look at this timing diagram. The first row of the timing diagram shows the value of D as a function of time. Time is on the horizontal axis always, right, on a timing diagram. And look at this. So what does D? D goes up at this time, and then it goes down, and then it stays down, it stays down, it goes up, it stays down, it goes up, like this, right? And here what happens is, you see, we see that, uh, first of all, because we're using master-slave, the transition is on which edge? The falling edge of the clock pulse. Right. So if, if, D, if Q starts off to be zero, and then D goes up, and then the clock pulse goes on, then what happens is it goes up, and then when it comes down, because D is one, what happens to Q? Q is one. Are you with me? And then if D goes, when, when, if D goes down after that clock pulse, and it stays down when the second clock pulse comes along, when that clock pulse goes down, what happens to the D? Sorry, what happens to Q? It goes, it goes down. And then if it stays down during the next clock pulse, then Q stays down. And, if it goes, and then if it goes up on the next clock pulse, Q goes up on the falling edge of the clock. Are you with me? And so now does everybody see how, can everybody, are you with me on where, you know, when the clock goes down, whatever value of D determines what the value of Q is going to be. Now, you guys, just visually look at that top row. Look at the pattern of that top row. And now look at the pattern of the bottom row. What is the relationship of the bottom row with the top row? It's what? Shifting. In other words, in time, what has it done? It's been what? Delayed. It's been delayed. Do you see? If you think of it as a function of time, it's been delayed. It's delayed one clock. Are you with me? So that's why it's also called a delay. But it's not. It's delayed in time, isn't it? Look, there, is the, there's the top. Hmm? It is in this specific case. It will. It you will. Flip D really quick, faster than. Whoa, 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 whoa! If you flip D really quick, yeah. But wait, wait, wait. But the way the way the circuit is designed to operate is, you set D, and then after it's you know, set, or after it's like stable, then the clock pulse comes along and it samples it. So you can think of the clock pulse as sampling. You know, every time a clock pulse comes along, that samples what the input is. Are you with me? Mm -hmm. So if D oper if D, if, our, if, your in if your D input has, be is behaved, well behaved, like all little boys should be. <laughs> Are you behave? If it's well behaved, then what will happen is the bottom one will be delayed. The bottom one will be sh time shifted. It will be delayed. Are you with me on that? So that's one. That's one way to interpret. Okay. So all right. Now, so look. Do you guys see now without peeking ahead at with any any of those slides? Do you see what we have to, what our task is now? Can you can we follow this procedure and do another do a construct a D flip flop out of an SR? So what's it gonna so what's gonna happen? This is gonna be here is our S. 
Here's our S and here's our R, right? And here's our clock, CK. Are you with me? And here's, gonna, here's our Q. And here's our Q bar, right? And furthermore, what are, what are we going to have coming in out here? What are we going to have coming in? A what? A D. Just a D. Right? Yeah? And what's going to be here? A big what? Combinational circuit. Right? And what's going to come out of this combinational circuit? An output for what? An output for S and a what? And an output for R. And, but furthermore, we might want to do what? We might want to do what? Feedback this like this. So does everybody understand that what we need to to design then is a how many input, how many output? Two input, two output. What we need to design to implement the D flip flop is a two input, two output combinational circuit to make it behave the way we want it to behave, to make D behave the way we want it to behave. Does everybody see? And so, and so. Uh, I'm curious, why do you need the feedback? Well, maybe you don't. Sometimes you do, sometimes you don't. Because it's, if it's supposed to be. Regardless of the current state, why would you need to know? Yeah, yeah, we might not have feedback. I'm just, did the, I'm just doing this in general. Okay. You see what I mean? You might not know ahead of time whether you need it or not. Oh. Are you with me on that? Maybe, maybe we do, maybe we don't. But actually, in this case, you can reason that you don't because it doesn't depend on what the right. current so, input is. Okay, so yeah. I'm okay, that's why I yeah, but yeah, yeah, yeah. But I'm, I just did it in ge in general. You would, you might not know that. Okay. So so does everybody see then that this whole thing in green, this whole thing in green, you know, with these coming out like this, Q and Q bar, this whole thing in green is the D flip flop. Are you with me on this? Okay, so now what should we, so let's, let's, do, let's do our, this is a real simple one, let's do, our, sim, let's do our, our design procedure. So what do we, so what should we, how did we, how many, how many, yeah there's, yeah there's going to be two inputs and two outputs and um, focus over here. So... What is the table that we're going to need? What's our, what is our design table? Well we, well, we will use the excitation table for S and R, but what about the design table? Um, yeah, we, we ha what we have is we have Q at time T and D at time, D at time T, and then, Q at time and, then what, what, and then we have a desired what? Q at time T plus one. Q at time T plus one. Is everybody following this all right? And then what we need is we need to know what should S and R be to do to, to produce that. Okay, so this would be S at time T and R at time T because, because the S and the R, that's the output of this combinational circuit that will just to be systematic about the whole thing. You could probably figure this out in your head without doing all this. Systematic. Have you have you figured it out yet? Maybe. Yeah. I think th this is a neat. But we'll 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 just we'll do the procedure just to show how the procedure works, right? Okay. So, well, what are the possibilities of Q at time t and D at time t? What are they? Zero zero, zero one, one zero one one. Okay. Well, what do you guys think? Yeah. Is it zero one zero one? Yes. Zero one zero one. Yeah. Is it zero one zero one? Yeah. Zero one zero one. And so and so here's the question. 
Um, and so now what transition are we looking at? We're looking at the transition from what? From here to here. Does everybody see where you put your fingers? Okay, so zero, zero. So by the excitation table, how can you have a zero to zero transition? Zero x, because SR could either be zero, zero, which would keep it the same, or zero, one, which would reset it. Is everybody clear on that? Mm -hmm. And then what would this one be? Yeah, zero, one, or one, zero? One, zero. Is everybody clear that this is one, zero? Okay, so one, zero, because you have to set it. And then the next one is zero, one, because you have to what? Reset it. Zero, one. And then this one would be what? X zero. Okay, now, <laughs> this is going to be kind of funny. Let's do a Carnot map. We've never done a Carnot map this small before. <laughs> What's it? Remember when we just started that Carnot maps? We started off with how many inputs? Three. Three inputs. But now how many inputs do we have? We only have two inputs. So, so look, so yeah, oh, this is possible. It's kind of funny, but, but here, but let's look. At zero, zero, so here. And then we have a what? A one at one, zero, a one here. Okay, so well, let's minimize this. <laughs> so now, obviously, how do you minimize this? Right here. And how do you minimize this? Right here. Yeah, it's kind of trivial, but you know, we're going through the process anyway. And now, what's the value of, uh, so what is this? It's D. Oh. Yeah, and what is R? Oh. So you're right. It didn't depend on Q. So, see, here is our, did we do it right? Figure 11.21. The Carnot map for S. Yep. yep. Carnot map for D. Yeah. Are we good? And now, could you draw the, without peeking, could you draw the circuit? Yeah, it's just an inverter. It's, it's a D going straight into the what? To the S. To S, and then an inverter for D going into the R. And see, you probably could have, probably could have figured that out. Without going through this mechanics, but still, I think it helps to go through to see how the, what the design process is for a sequential circuit. All right. So that's the D flip-flop. Now what was the, what's our fourth one? So we've, we've done SR, JK, D, and now the next one is? Uh, toggle. T, toggle. Mm -hmm. The T flip-flop. So now, let's see what our toggle flip-flop does. What is its characteristic? Well, it's kind of like a, it's like a selective you know, the, it does have an input, but what happens is the, in, the T input into a T flip-flop, it, um, it selectively toggles. So if T is zero, then the state remains unchanged, but if T is one, then it toggles. In other words, if T is one, and this one is, gonna, is going to depend on the state, right? So if T is one, the next state will be zero if t, sorry, if t is one and the current state is zero, the next state will be one. And if t is one and the current state is one, the next state will be zero. Yeah? So this just be... All right. Now. So here we go. Let's do the, so let's do the characteristic table. Okay, so we have capital T at time t and Q at time t, and then what we want to, to list, to characterize it, is Q at time t plus one. Okay, so what are the possibilities here? Zero, 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 one, one, zero, one, one. 
Okay, so according to that description, what should this characteristic table look like? Yeah, if t is 0, then the state stays the same, 0, 1. And then if it's 1, then it should toggle. So this should be 1, 0. Is everybody good? So what, so what are these two conditions? These talk, yeah, the first one is if t is 0, it's what? It's no toggle and toggle. Yeah, or unchanged, yeah. Okay, so no change. So here it is, figure 11.23, no change and toggle. Right? Okay, and guess what? Instead of us doing the design right now, what's going to happen? You're going to exercise with a student. So you can, cool. you can do that. Right? Now, here's what's interesting about uh, sequential design. Um, we started we started with um, the SR flip-flop, and then what did we do? We started with the SR flip-flop, and then what did we do with it? Yeah, and we built, we built the D and the JK. We built the JK and the D and the, now you're going to make the T. All out of the SR flip-flop. But guess what, you guys? <laughs> what? We started with the SR and did what? No. Built the other ones out of the SR. But guess what you can do alternatively? You could build. Yeah, actually, you could build any flip-flop out of any other flip-flop. Yeah. It's all just a matter of, design, of, of, of designing the, com the combinational circuit to do that. So any given flip-flop can be constructed from any other flip-flop with the right combinational circuit. Are you with me? Is everybody, do you see the idea there? There's nothing magic about the fact that S, I mean, SR flip-flop is kind of like the basic one because we built it up out of these cross-coupled <laughs> latches. You see what I mean? But really, I mean, if you only had, if you had some, like, like if you had a toggle device, you know, a toggle, you could use that toggle device to build whatever, any, any of the other flip-flops. But now look, what did we need in order to build those other um, flip-flops out of the SR, like over here on this design table? What did, we, what did we need for this last column of the design table? What did, what did we need for this last column of the design table? The SR latch? Well, I mean, where did we get these values? How do we know how to fill this in? We got them from the what? From which table? Oh, which table did we extract the, these from? Oh, from the um, excitation table. The excitation table. Are you with me? Correct. We got them from the excitation table. So if we're going to build another flip-flop, if, if we're going to build a flip-flop out of something that's not an SR flip-flop, what are we going to need? We're going to need the what? Table. The excitation table for that flip-flop that is the building block. Right. Do you see what I mean? Right. Is everybody clear on this? We've really worked with is the SR latch. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because we were building everything out of an SR latch, that means that we, you know, we we always only use the excitation of the SR latch, of the SR flip-flop. But if we're going to use another flip-flop to build a, 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 a sequential circuit, what do we need? The excitation table for that flip-flop. And furthermore, you guys, even though we're, you know, what we're going to do is we're going to be, what our next step is going to be to design general, a general sequential circuit out of several flip-flops. And we might have certain flip-flops that we have to work with, you see. And so what we need in our toolkit now are the what? The excitation tables for what? All four tables. For all, yeah, for the other three. Okay, so let now, don't peek. No fair looking ahead at the slides. Okay, or in the book. And let's see if we can logically figure out what the excitation tables for the other flip-flops are. Okay, so now, 
So now, let's start with the JK. So here's Q at time T, Q at time T plus 1, and the question is, what should J at time T and K at time T be to produce that transition? Are you with me? Mm -hmm. so, this, so the possible transitions are 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1. Now, yeah, JK could either be what? Zero, 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 in which case, in which case it's no change, or zero, one, in which case it resets. So there, if it could be zero, zero, or zero, one, then it's what? It's zero X. Okay, but now you guys check this out. In order for it to transition from 0 to 1, you can either do what? Set it. Or toggle it. Or toggle it. That's 1x. <coughs> so to set it would be what? 1, 1, 0. Yeah, 1, 0. Or to toggle, or to toggle would be 1, 1. So. Is everybody following this all right? And then, in order to have the transition be from 1 to 0, what is it? It's, um, you either have to, what, reset it, SR, set, reset, so, which would be 0, zero, one. zero one, or 1, one. or 1, 1. So 0, 1, or 1, 1 means X1, and then what would this be? Zero zero would keep it the same. Or one zero to set it. Or one zero to set it. To set it, yes. Are, is everybody clear that that's what that is? For the excitation table for the JK? Well, and then what else? We could also do, let's do for, um, what's the other flip flop? D. D? So let's do D at time T. We'll just put them all together. all together here. And then we'll do T at time T. Okay, so now, what's the excitation table for D at time, for D? In order to have it be 0, 0, what has to happen? Uh, D is 0. D has to be 0. D is 1. And here D has to be 1. D is 0. D has to be 0. D, is D has to be 1. Right? Because D, Q at time T plus 1 is D at time T. So if that's got to be, that's got to be 0. Is everybody with me on this? And now, what about the excitation table for T? In order for this to be 0, 0, this T must be what? It must be 0. Here, it must do what? It must toggle. It, so this must be 1. This one, it must do what? One again. It must toggle. And then this one, it must be 0. So we don't have any x's there. So here's all three, here's all three of them. And that, it's actually maybe a little less confusing to have, the, have a separate table for each one like this. But, is every, but we all see how these work? Mm -hmm. We good? Okay, and now here's the thing. With these excitation tables, now we have four, four common, and by the way, there's a whole bunch of, I had a friend who did all the possible, possible <coughs> flip-flops that were, you know, you can define your own oddball, you know, you can define some oddball flip-flop thing, and, but you can always create it from whatever, you know, there's, there's nothing magic about any one. As long as it has state and you can control it, you know, the state. You can't have, yeah, I suppose there are some constant flip-flops that never change state, but they aren't very interesting, not very useful. But now, here's the thing. Once we have these, this common set of flip-flops, we can construct general sequential circuits, but general sequential circuits are just a generalization of 
these simple one state circuits, right? So now here's what goes on typically in a, in a computer system. What happens is you don't just have one bit of storage. You have many bits of storage. And each bit is stored as a what? Flip-flop. Are you with me? So now what we're going to have is like a group. We're going to have a set of flip-flops. And the state of the circuit is going to depend on, you know, the, the, the number of possible states of the circuit depend on how many flip-flops we have. In fact, if we have n flip-flops, then, then how many possible states of the circuit do we have? If we have, if we have one flip-flop, how many possible states do we have? What are the possible states if we have one flip-flop? The flip-flop could either be what or what? Zero or one. It, Q could either be zero or one. It could either be in state zero or one. So we have one flip-flop, we have two spots. If we have two flip-flops, what could the state of the whole circuit be? It could either be what? Zero, zero, one. zero, one, so one, zero, or two, one, one. So it's two to the end. If you have three flip-flops, you have eight possible states. Are you with me? So, a general sequential circuit is an interconnection of gates and flip-flops. The flip-flops are called state registers. And the current state and the current output, and the, cur the current state and the current input determine the current output. And the current state and the current input determine the next state, that is the state after one clock pulse. Now check this out, you guys. Look at this. Figure 11.25 now, do you recognize the pattern here? It's the exact same thing. It's the exact same pattern, only instead of just having what? One bit. One bit we have a what? A set, a collection of flip-flops. Mm -hmm. And this pipe that goes from the state registers and feeds back into this combinational circuit, that, those are all the cues. Those are the cues from that set. You know, if we have three flip-flops, then that's three cues that are going back. And, you know, Q bars if we need the inverse, right? So that we can, don't have to put any extra uh, inverters here. And then there is, these outputs are all the, are the well, the, the, actually, we might, the circuit might want, we might want to produce, we, want, we might want to have the output produce, we might want to have the circuit produce an output that depends on the input and the state. Okay, so that represents a collection of wires for the output. And then we have a set of wires coming in the input. So look, can you imagine then what, oh, and by the way, not shown here is one big, what line is missing here that's implied? That line that comes in clock. from the bottom, the clock. So you can imagine one clock line coming in here and going into those state registers and feeding into the clock input of each state register at the same time. I mean, all right, going into all of them. So they all change state at the same time, right? So now what happens is, instead of having our timing diagram be such that we have the input for one flip-flop being stable and then sampling it when the clock pulse, you know, comes along, we have a whole set of them connected to the same clock pulse. And then the inputs to all of those are stable and then the clock comes and then now what happens? Not just the one flip-flop but two or three of them at once change state. Are you with me? So now what we're going to do now, what we're going to do next then is we're going to generalize our design procedure to have sets of flip-flops instead of just one. And we will do two activities. And what are those two activities that we will do? What are the two activities that you do as a programmer with software? You can do what with your software? You can either do what or what? Design. You can either analysis. You can either do analysis, in which case you're given the what? The program. And you do what? You figure out what it produces. Or you can have a specification and do what? Yeah, figure out what it's supposed to do and then design it. And so here in figure 11.26, th these are the two activities. With analysis, the input and the sequential circuit are given and the output is to be determined. 
And then in part B, that's a design problem. Input and desired output are given and we have to design the circuit. So here's what we're going to do the next two times. Next time we're going to do one big hairy analysis problem. Alright, so we'll do analysis first and then we'll do design. So that's what's coming up on Thursday. And fortunately for us, we don't have lab because we, you know, we don't have lab for a while because we pre-poned and our previous one and postponed our next one. <laughs> All right, good deal. See you Thursday.